You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. We're out and about and we're in Castle Connections at the moment and uh, I'm going to be talking to Jamanda Speedwell. Uh, you may remember that uh, I spoke to Jamanda during her project when she was the artist in residence in room uh, at Queenborough Creek. Uh, firstly, Jamanda, it's great to speak to you again. Hi, Daniel. Now, I know your um, project is finishing. I could just wondering if you could sort of explain to our listeners um, what was the next stage. So, yes, when we first met, we were in the converted shipping container, Queenborough Creek, as you said, and we just started the project. We were collecting sightings of ships and boats, local boats, any sort of vessel, and we were recording them on a chart, adding new ones every day. And we were also updating the previous vessels every day. So the commercial ships, we were following them on the internet to see where they were travelling to. So over the two weeks, we could follow how far they'd got during that time. That's right. I remember you had a, a log up on the wall, I think, yes. when you come along. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So, yes, we did that for two weeks and we ended up with a really interesting picture of where all the ships were going that I did continue to follow them after that because you do need to follow ships for at least a month especially the international ships to see where they're really going so the general results I mean one of the interesting examples is the um, the gas ships the liquefied natural gas ships which you see from across the harbour that um, offload at the Isle of Grain terminal. Those are one of the sort of very interesting new features that you can see from the harbour. And I was very curious as to where they got their gas from, where they were coming from, and I was asking people, visitors, if anyone knew about that. I had all sorts of answers, and I think they're true. I think that the gas comes from different places according to the price at the time and where it's available from. But um, after following them for two weeks to the Suez Canal, then losing them for about a week, I finally picked them up again in the Persian Gulf where they stopped at Qatar and United Arab Emirates. Right. So it's just a really interesting that you can actually see where the ships you are seeing are going to, where they're picking up their cargoes from, where they're taking their cargoes to. I was going to say, you don't actually think that when you see these ships looking out from the island, you don't think of where they actually go to always. Absolutely, yeah. Or people just assume that you're not, you'll not see them again or you can't find out, but it's so easy to follow them. There are lots of um, internet websites. My favourite one is marinetraffic.com. And um, most commercial ships you can follow on that. So in the end, um, I drew up a rough map, actually, so I could see visually where they went to. And several went over to North America, stopping in the per- sorry, the, <laughs> the Gulf of Mexico, um, in Mexico itself, in the southern United States. Lots of them... Oh, actually, most of them actually go over the North Sea to their northern uh, European ports. Lots go to Scandinavia. And then lots went through the Strait of Gibraltar, the Mediterranean, through the Suez Canal. Then again, we lost them for about a week. And then I finally picked them up again in the Far East. So lots of the container ships go to Taiwan, Singapore, etc. Um, and then there's more interesting local journeys to Scotland um, and around the UK, and and the little the bulk well the relatively little bulk carriers that you see coming right past Queenborough that go up the swale to Ridham Dock and Grovehurst Jetty they're particularly interesting because because they're smaller vessels and they normally carry one type of cargo at a time they take really interesting journeys you can see them going up into lochs in the Highlands um, up into fjords through ship canals, all sorts of tiny little places, often just like a jetty which is attached to a quarry. And because of that, you can often work out what their cargoes are. Now, I know one of the um, outcomes is uh, a reading. Before you do that, I was just wondering if you could explain to our listeners a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So once we've finished that part of the project, I... I collected together all the findings and all the other things I'd seen. For example, names of the boats in the actual creek. Lots of things I'd observed and people had told me um, in Queenborough. And I put them together into a piece. So I'm going to read that to you shortly, but I'll just explain, first of all, some of the contents. Um, There's lots of boat names in there. All the ship movements you'll hear in the piece, they are from what we collected in the shipping newsroom project. So 
they're all vessels that were originally seen from Queenborough Harbour. Uh, the other thing which features strongly in the piece um, are turnstones, and those are little waders, and they always caught my attention when I went down to the harbour to look for ships. They're the um, little brown-backed waders which are almost always down on the foreshore at the harbour. And they're always picking through the piles of seaweed or turning over stones looking for food. And they've got great charm. They're a delight to watch. And unusually for a wader, they're not easily frightened. So you can actually sit and watch them from just a metre or two away. But what really um, excited me about the turnstones was one day when the tide uh, was almost completely in, had taken over the shore, but instead of flying away, the turnstones um, just started walking on the water. The water was basically solid with weed, and they just continued skittering over as if it was land. So I thought of them as the surfing turnstones. The other interesting thing about turnstones is that they have lots of great names, as well as turnstone, which tells you exactly what it does. The turnstones have other good names from around the country, local names. For example, ebb peckers and tangle pickers, which say exactly what they do. They pick through tangles and they peck at the ebb. So I've used those names also in the piece and I've also made up a few other little similar names myself. So the birds that I mention throughout the piece are turnstones under different names. The only exception is the go-away bird, and that's a local name for the red shank, because unlike the turnstone, uh, the go-away bird, the red shank, is very easily startled. Uh, the slightest movement, you know, 200 metres away, and it will fly off shrieking and scare away all the other birds as well. But then I had the idea to call the turnstones the comeback bird, because they, they're very ready to come back and very reliable in coming back. So those are the main things I'll refer to in the piece. Um, I should also mention uh, the Queenborough Rowing Club. They're very admirable, actually. They go out um, throughout the winter, despite the weather. Yeah. They even went out um, that week when it snowed. And one of their rowing gigs is called Sexburger, uh, named after the Saxon Queen of Kent. Yeah. So just so that you know what that is when I mention it. So it's basically, it's a picture of Queenborough Harbour and Creek at the time, and this was in the midst of winter, this was January. Uh, the town is in a real lull at that time. It's the hardest time for the town, for the shops and businesses, and also feeling the effects of the recession. Um, there was one week in particular, local pub closed down, and also the steelworks, so uh, it was feeling quite bleak at that time. But yet there are all these tiny little fascinating details going on, all these funny little things and little promises um, of things to come. And despite how quiet it is, there's no visiting yachts at that time of year. There's lots of things going on. People are working on their boats and fixing things. And the fishermen are still going out. So when you start looking at the detail, there's an enormous amount going on. Lots of fascinating little details. So at the moment we're talking to Jermaine the Speed when we're talking a little bit about um, what happened after her exhibition in Room, which is the mobile shipping container that travels around Swell. It's converted into uh, an art gallery. So at the moment we're talking to Jermaine the Speedwell and we've been talking a little bit about what happened uh, after she was in Room and the results of her exhibition. But uh, now Jermaine is going to be reading her reading. I've called it simply The Shipping News, Queenborough, Winter 2012. Slips and hards, mud banks and floodgates, cocklers, catches, trawlers and dredges, at Swale Ness, Mary's Hole, Chalk Wharf and Horse Shoal, passing ships, navigating channels and offloading cargoes, while teams of turnstones twitch for insects on tide lines. Hunky Dory, Ruby Forty, Skoden, Skeetwell, Why Not, Donk, Sir Hendrick, Miss Muffet, Hurricane, Harvey Jane, and Gwendolyn. Sea Tractor at Pump Wharf, 
Jack Tarr in the creek, Medway leader passing Chetney Marshes, and Sheppy two and three at the quay. Liz Ann in the scrubbing berth, Hobbit in the harbour yard, Amity overwintering on woodblocks, and Saxburger trundled on a trailer down the hard. A black ship slips down the creek, a fire launch speeds up the swale, the harbour controller patrols the moorings, and beachcombing stone turners sift through ridges of dead vegetation. Trot boats and pier ports, masts struck on barges and spud legs on Sampson. A new mizzen boom is made for the white moth, and a shipwright shapes trunnels for the triton. Car carriers loom over Lapple Bank, with porgy perceived through the Abbot Lab gap. A container ship shape is made out in the mist, and a careful watch kept for the vigilant. Pebble pushes prod rocks, shove shells, flick sprigs and leave a weed. A tug ties up at Rushenden. A coaster heads for Hull. A bulk carrier leaves for Barking Creek, and a tanker anchors at the tongue. Lady Mary to Grovehurst Jetty. Wilson tees down Saltpan Reach. Svitz a victory, manoeuvring in the Medway. Eleanor in training at the Altide Landing. Lady Clara loops long points length. Equillian sets out for Faversham. A rowing gig turns at Colwasher Wharf, and a Bennett's barge arrives at Ridham. Coasters and carriers deliver gravel to Grain, gypsum to Camsley, and coal to Kingsnorth. Sacks of raked whiteweed for fish tanks and fake ferneries are unloaded in Queenborough Creek and ebb peckers pick through piles of tidings and tug at tangles of algae. A warning call from the go-away bird startles the shore and shocks the flocks up in black and white patterns. Burke's shipper bears for the North Sea, ever strong to the English Channel. Celtic forester rounds the coast of Brittany. Scott Mariner cuts through the sound of Mull. Hyundai Splendor makes the Strait of Gibraltar, Ever smart the Mediterranean, El Sala enters the Suez Canal, and Washington Express arrives at Charleston. There's Warber in the Baltic, Alba Highway at St. Petersburg, El Tamera Express across the Atlantic, Catherine Borchard through the Bay of Biscay. Venus Spirit passes Freetown, Union Pluto heads for Flushing, the City of London, from Ridham to Rotterdam, and Hansa Kloppenburg between Thamesport and Hamburg, with tangle pickers pecking at stranded bands of bladderwrack, dashing at wave ebbs to dabble in freshly left debris. Cutter's Dock, Smuggler's Gut, Black Stakes and Pottery Bay, Upturned Tenders, Shut Down Chandlers, and Shops Treading Water in Winter. A Single Seal at Load and Hope, a for sale sign on a sloop. The lengthy low tides make a long wait for leaving, and there's a dash in the dusk to haul up on the hard before dark. There's rumbles and hums and the wild whoops and weeps of waders out late, land lighting up, masthead lights slipping by, and a brightly lit gas ship glowing from over the bay. There's racks stowed with rowboats and anchors on land, with free bird awaiting water, Redeemer requiring salvaging, Explorer and Plunger meant for adventure, and Winterwood awaiting spring. Burke Shipper docks back at Chatham with paper from Sweden. A fixed fishing trawler is restored to Whitstable, and the two sons berths at dusk with dabs, sprats, pouting and whiting. There's a race of spray past the Isle of Grain, and a wave from a friendly tender. Rowers set out in the snow off the slip, and seawater swamps the mudflats in minutes. The comeback birds again return, edged back in by the tide, till virtually surfing as they skitter off strandings and balance on weed-weighted wavelets. <laughs>